my congratulations and thanks to all three shortlisted winners. That was a Freudian slip. I actually said shortlisted winners rather than writers. But actually, I, I, if, if people had seen how much we wrangled over these three titles, they would know that they are all winners in their way. But uh, after a great deal of discussion, uh, the judges eventually decided to award the Penn Ackley Prize to Alice Jolly for <laughs> Dead Bones. Not terribly munificent check, but um, <laughs> there we are. Um, you're now expected to say a few words. <laughs> so it says on the schedule. I shall stand up. <laughs> um, I think it's fashionable on occasions like this to sort of say, gosh, I never thought something like this could happen to me. But I should be honest and say that I spent an embarrassingly large amount of my time composing... Um, winners' speeches for prizes that I've got absolutely no hope of winning. Um, so, so I should, on that basis, be quite prepared, but actually, um, I'm not. Um, what, <laughs> obviously, um, I think it's fantastic that English Pen give out prizes to middle-class people like me who've got time to sit and write books when they've got really, really important work to do um, protecting the rights of people who, who seriously need help with freedom of speech issues and who are imprisoned just for speaking the truth, and it's such important work. I'd also like to thank um, the relatives of Mr Ackley. It's easy to think, I oh, will do literary prizes matter, but unfortunately we're in a world where it's all about book sales and how many copies a book sells, and literary prizes are one of the few ways in which we can say, actually, maybe a book didn't sell so well, but it's an important book and we need it, and so literary prizes... Um, are incredibly important for that reason. Um, I'd also, obviously, some thank yous. I'd like to thank my husband, who is not here. Um, he's a wonderful man and a very patient man, and I couldn't be a writer if he didn't give me loads of support. Occasionally, I stomp around the house saying, is there anything worse in the world than writing a book? And he says very quietly, maybe living with somebody who's writing a book. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I would also um, like to say thank you, a huge thank you to Unbound, because they published this book when nobody else would. And John Mitchinson and Isabel and Amy are here, and they stuck by this book all the way, and they believed in it when other people didn't. Um, and I would also like to thank Victoria Hobbs, my agent, who is not here, but she, I know she would have liked to have been here, um, and she, again, she could easily have walked away when the publishers didn't want this book, and, and she didn't. Um, and a last couple of thank yous um, to all the people who subscribed for the book, because it isn't just my book. It's, a, it's all those people's books. They all had the nerve to come forward with their money and say, yes, we believe in this book. And I think it's also a very interesting indication. You know, people think, is crowdfunding a serious way to publish a book? Well, clearly, it is a serious way to publish a book. So I'm very pleased um, about that. And I think um, the only other thank you to say also is that um, over the years, I've had so many conversations with bereaved parents, and I feel that this book sort of belongs to all the people who campaign so tirelessly on that issue and who sadly really, really aren't heard, and particularly to that woman, and they're up and down the country in England, and they sat in their local village hall on one evening a month, talking and talking and helping the people who've just lived through the most devastating experience. And those people are so brave, and they don't really get many thank yous. And so the fact that this book has been, you know, has achieved this is very much a win for them as well, and for the importance of the work that they do. Um, so thank you very much. <laughs>